Hey everyone, we'll be starting in a minute or so. We're just waiting for a few more people to join. Stay tuned. Hey, and welcome to Gupshop's webinar on how to build an effective customer support chatbot with Gupshop. My name is Sohan Maheshwar, and I lead developer relations for Gupshop. That's my Twitter ID right there. Um, we also have with us Shreyans, who's the developer evangelist at Gupshop. So we'll be talking to you a little bit about how um, chatbots can really help in the customer service realm and how um, it's one of those verticals that have actually taken to this paradigm. Uh, before that, we'll, I'll give you a bit of an introduction and a bit of an overview. This is the agenda for today. We'll talk a little bit about the state of the bot ecosystem, how you can build an effective customer service bot. We'll talk a little bit about this feature called human agent takeover, and then Shans will show you a demo on how you can actually use Gupshop to build an effective customer service bot. So before that, a quick uh, statistic. So Gartner, who would generally lead sort of research in the technology field, uh, they put out a report that said by 2020, the customer will manage 85% of its relationship with an enterprise without act interacting with a human, which is a pretty uh, stellar statistic if you really look at it, right? So we are all used to the sort of traditional ways of how uh, we interact with, uh, you know, either enterprises, brands, or businesses. Uh, but in in the next three years, I think 85% of our interactions uh, with brands and businesses will be without a human. Right, and and that's that's quite staggering. Um, if you look at it, basically most of these will happen over sort of messaging or social media, right? Uh, we have had the whole paradigm shift from the desktop era to the internet era to the smartphone era, and now to the messaging era, right? We have seen these paradigm shifts happen often. Uh, we are currently now in the messaging era. Everyone is using messaging apps for pretty much everything, right? Uh, the reasons for that are numerous. Uh, it. it, it there was a sort of perfect storm, if you will. Like, for instance, there was a rise in number of users in messaging apps. Uh, you can see the graph below, which plots the number of users on the big four messaging apps versus the big four social networking apps. And you can see somewhere around 2015, the numbers just shot up and have continued shooting up, right? So uh, people are using messaging, like tens of thousands of, uh, uh, sorry, people are using messaging hundreds of times a day. Uh, at the same time, you want brands and businesses really want strong social media presence and they really want to be responsive to their customers. One of the reasons why bots are also big is because the improvements in things like natural language processing, machine learning, artificial intelligence, etc., and the sort of availability to developers such as you and me, uh, so that you know people can actually sort of build bots. Uh, just to prove to you that these numbers are staggering, this was from uh, end of last year, so these numbers have only increased. But as you can see, these are the sort of big messaging apps that are out there, and they all have staggering numbers. For instance, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger have over a billion monthly active users, whereas uh, you know WeChat, Kik, etc., still have pretty very interesting numbers. Uh, the great thing is all the messaging apps and the messaging platforms that you see on the screen support bots in one way or the other. And yes, that includes WhatsApp. Uh, if you guys have been following the news, you've read that WhatsApp is slowly rolling out WhatsApp for business. So there are a couple of brands like Book My Show and KLM Airlines who actually have verified accounts on WhatsApp right now. So it's only going to be a matter of time before they start supporting bots for businesses on WhatsApp. Right? It's not just the numbers. So uh, the bot ecosystem itself has grown a lot. 
uh, you know, bots interact right now, just to give a definition for those of you who might not be familiar, uh, bots interact with humans today via conversation interfaces, mostly on text but also on voice. Uh, and they're really disrupting how customers really engage, right? So just to give you an idea of the whole bot ecosystem on Facebook kind of started last year. And in over a year, Facebook Messenger recently announced that they have over 100,000 bots and 100,000 developers developing bots on Messenger, which is quite frankly a staggering number given the short period of time. Uh, it's, on the, it's not just Facebook Messenger. There are a bunch of other messaging platforms that support bots as well. These are just few of them. You know, you have Skype, Line, Viber, Kik, etc., and you know, a bunch of consumer-facing. We have also things on the enterprise side, like Slack, HipChat, and Cisco Spark. Uh, that really support bots and you know, are furthering the case of the bot ecosystem. Uh, we spoke a little bit about the tech side, but the investment side also in technology companies that do bots are, are pretty huge. For instance, Slack has a Slack fund that has so far invested about a little more than 2 million actually in, a, in about uh, quite a few bot startups. Uh, y Combinator has an AI track, you know, which uh, invests in companies that are doing AI on national language processing or bots also. Uh, recently, VentureBeat reported that about 180 bot-related companies have attracted about 24 billion in funding to date. Again, it's really staggering number. So you know that there is a huge ecosystem and there's a lot of interest around bots, right? So basically, this is a short, short overview of the entire bot ecosystem. Uh, you know, so we specifically for the purpose of this webinar are going to be talking about how you can use chatbots in customer service. Right, so if you see, I mean, we at Gupshop have worked with a lot of companies in the chatbot space. Uh, you know, we've worked with companies who use our product. We've also developed bots for other people. Uh, one thing we were big to see across all the verticals, you know, we've worked with bots from all verticals. I mean, banking, finance, e-commerce, you know, fun, games, uh, travel, hospitality, FMCG, whatever. Uh, across all of these things, the sort of low-hanging fruit or the sort of most popular vertical you know, that all brands and businesses really went to with chatbots was customer service, right? And and there is one main reason, and that is because customer service in its current form is is not something that any user likes, right? This cartoon here, I think, really encapsulates the entire customer service experience now. For instance, right now, if you wanted customer support for any, with any brand or business, you would have to contact them on one of these three platforms, which is phone, email, or social media. Right over phone, it's it's a it's a very painful process, and I'm sure all of us have gone through this. You usually dial like a toll-free number. You have to hit a bunch of buttons, you know, uh, over IVR. Then you wait for about 10 minutes when your call is on hold, and then invariably your call is cut. And eventually, even if you do get in touch with someone, maybe that person is the right person, or that person hangs up, uh, or it's just not a very pleasant experience. Uh, the other version, uh, you know, that again, most of you here would have probably encountered is email where, you know, you have like a support at so and so dot com and invariably you email them, you get like an automated response saying you'll hear back from us in 24 hours. You don't, uh, you send them another email, you get like a half hearted response asking you for more details. This cycle cont continues maybe for a couple of exchanges and, you know, um, eventually the brands just stop replying. Uh, it's a very sort of similar experience on social media. I'm sure we've all vented on social media, especially Twitter, about, uh, you know, an unpleasant experience with the brand. Usually you'd have someone come and tell you something, you know, saying, oh, we're very sorry for experience. Can you give us details? There's a back and forth, but, you know, your problem isn't really solved most of the time. So I think all of us have really gone through this. And, and this is a very broken sort of experience for any user. At the end of the day, any brand or any business really wants to have a strong sort of connect with its users and, you know, doesn't want to leave a sour taste in the mouth. Uh, chatbots is one of those things that can instantly disrupt this entire market, right? It has the ability to completely change how all of this and address all of these problems, right? So uh, chatbots in customer service are going to be beneficial, uh, not just for the consumer, but also for the brand and business, right? It's not one of those things that are one-sided, but it needs like a lot of effort from the other side. Uh, for instance, for a consumer, Right, for a consumer, it's going to be very, very convenient um, at the comfort of my own home or if I'm at work or even if I'm traveling, uh, I can chat, you know, it, it's not invasive like a phone call where I can't do other things. I can use chat and uh, try and solve my query. Uh, second, I'm going to get a response immediately. Um, I don't have to wait 24 hours like how I would like over email or social media. Uh, second, I know that I'm not talking to a a uh, human, right? A human can have a bad day, can have an off day, can get angry at you and make the experience even worse. Whereas with a chatbot, 
uh, especially like well designed and well developed ones that you know empathize with the users you can you can be guaranteed of you know being slightly uh, take well taken care of and spoken to quite well uh, the great thing is chatbots can handle unlimited volumes and at any point of time uh, most call centers are you know obviously bound or they have a restriction of the number of agents that they have which is why we are on hold so often especially if there's an outage like say you know uh, recently i had this experience where my flight was delayed thanks to uh, a typhoon over hong kong and it was just impossible to get through uh, customer support to kind of try and figure out when my next flight was with a chatbot that that's you know that that is a non issue uh, it can handle unlimited volumes and and it's open 24/7 right so you don't need to employ people or anything like that uh, it's going to be open 24/7 the last thing i think is is common to all chatbots but i think it really really uh, resonates in the context of customer service but it's highly contextual and personalized a chatbot can kind of remember you know earlier uh, discussions you've had with it uh, it can give you really personalized sort of uh, you know based on your favorites or maybe some settings that you've done and it can really give you like a personalized sort of experience that will really you know leave you with a good impression of the brand that you're talking to so it's really beneficial for a consumer but it, a chatbot is really beneficial for a business as well right first and foremost you know uh, it's one thing that all brands and businesses really strive for which is customer satisfaction and engagement and that is achieved completely with a chatbot right uh, for a business you can eliminate like uh, you know i think 50 to 60% of your workforce and kind of automate it and that's saving huge cost for your business uh, and at the same time you know uh, especially if you have a product you can really integrate the chatbot with your product so questions such as why am i not able to log in or you know when will i get a refund uh, when is my product due these sort of questions will be very easily answered because there is a strong integration with your product and uh, you can get again like i said earlier you, the business can give out these sort of highly contextualized and personalized responses so we spoke a little bit about cost saving uh, there was actually a pretty interesting study by business intelligence uh, called the chatbots explainer which they did last year right and and they found they actually took like verticals like insurance services financial services sales and customer service and uh, they they found that about 30% of uh, you know the tasks done by today's call center staff can actually be automated uh, which i think is a very fair study and you know given that most of the sort of queries come from a standard list of frequently asked questions all of those can be answered by a reasonably smart, smart chatbot and because all of that can be answered and because the volumes are so high uh, there's a potential to save about 24 billion dollars which which is a huge amount so businesses are going to save a lot of money by just implementing chatbots for their customer service so i've spoken a little bit about how uh, customer service chatbot uh, work I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Shreyans, who's going to show you demos of a couple of chatbots and uh, how they work, and then maybe he'll also show you a demo of how to code one. So, Shreyans, over to you. I'm just going to make you the presenter. Yep. Uh, thanks, sir. Yeah. Hello, guys. Uh, yeah. So, as Shohan mentioned there. that uh, customer support is one field uh, which is actually highly impacted by the chatbot phenomenon and um, it it actually helps brands and businesses to uh, you know increase their uh, increase customer satisfaction and so on has already shown you some uh, uh, numbers and how it can help you in cost cutting as well as improve uh, uh, improve your customer satisfaction right so let's uh, let's look at some of the bots uh, which actually uh, you know helps uh, customers with uh, i would say level 1 uh, faq sort of question and answer so let's look at this uh, this is a national school of business which is in india uh, they have a chatbot on their uh, website itself now this could be a bot on facebook messenger but they chose to have it uh they have it on on facebook messenger as well as on their website so i'm just going to use their website to show this so i'm just quickly going to enter my name and it will ask me for two more things because it's also serving as a lead generation for them so i am just going to and a phone number and my email it will ask me my email id so i'm just going to give that out as well and now it will set the expectation that you can ask me uh, questions around placements rankings fees and so on so why don't we go ahead and ask something around the fee structure so 
let's ask uh, what is your fee structure and it says that uh, it gives me an amount rupees for that it's like 4 million and uh, yeah it's uh, close to that not not even 4 million uh, for two years which can be payable in uh, four installments uh, it's like 430k uh, and in, it can be paid in four installments let's go ahead and ask what courses they have to offer now as a user I would have to actually go navigate through multiple uh, all these tabs to understand or uh, to get all these information rather than or else I would have given them a call but I'm just going to uh, uh, chat to the chatbot and get my answers uh, so I'm just going to say what courses do you offer and it's a uh, it gives it tells me that they offer a MBA plus PGPM dual degree course uh, and how can I contact you So they give me a phone number and how can I contact them? So this is one example where, you know, basic questions of uh, someone, a student maybe who is trying to understand uh, uh, about different uh, questions, has queries around uh, National School of Business can be answered by the bot. And if something it cannot answer, it will just give you that for further assistance, uh, please contact uh, National. Then let's look at uh, this Akbar Travels. Uh, this is going to... Uh, to be live soon uh, they are uh, building this uh, again same uh, customer support kind of you can also you know log in um, uh, to this and then see everything but uh, let's ask uh, uh, I can type any question so let's say how let's just say how to book a ticket I'm just going to ask how can I book some ticket on their website so there the board is going to give me steps that I need to follow uh, to book a ticket. Uh, also, I can say uh, uh, what's the process of refund as if I want to know first that. So, uh, what's the refund policy they have and they the board is going to give me that if the flight is cancelled, the airline eligible for refund and all other aspect about it. Uh, I can even ask uh, uh, now uh, this is as good as uh, the you know question answers which are being trained uh, on the bot so maybe I can ask uh, how can I check my booking status and there you go so I have to log into my account to check booking status and all so this is another example of it. Uh, similarly, there is another uh, uh, this online university which is like you can uh, purchase different courses and things. So here also, I'm just going to key in my name quickly, real quick. So uh, this bot is. Uh, I just quickly go over this. Now it totally depends upon uh, how you have designed your bot. Uh, you may not like Akbar Travels didn't ask me for all these. So how can I reset my password? So for, for example, I forgot my password with online university. Then uh, I can just. I'm sorry. Well, uh, that's something broken with their bot. So I let's try again. How to to reset my password? Let's just try that again. Ah, okay. Now you have, uh, you can actually click on uh, request and so on. Or I can just click on this and connect to one of their associate who will respond back to us. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So, so these are a few examples, uh, you know, about uh, how you can actually uh, help uh, your users to uh, get answers quickly of very simple things which otherwise I actually have to go to uh, as a user I have to go to the FAQ and read through it or even talk call uh, your cust or call the customer care or email 
customer care to get answers, right? So this is very, uh, uh, very good uh, and very useful for any organization or business. So uh, let's talk about a uh, you know, uh, little bit of e effectiveness of this. So there was a uh, pilot done by Accenture. Accenture is a, comp uh, uh, is a service based company who b develops things for different, uh, different uh, cus uh, customers. So they did a pilot with Telco and they have released that they have seen like successful resolution of 82% of their customer interaction through automation and artificial intelligence. That means Bot was able to actually resolve 82% of the cu customer interactions. That was just with the pilot with the Telco. That means uh, if they they go live with that bot, uh, they would actually uh, the bot will be able to uh, resolve like 82% of customer interaction, and then uh, you know the customer support agent can just focus on uh, the big uh, you know big queries which the bot is not able to answer, and then uh, it, that way the customer satisfaction actually shoots through the sky, right? So I mean, in even in FA to uh, 2017. Uh, uh, they release a stat saying Rogers, which is a Canadian telco, they saw a, a rise of uh, you know 60 percent in uh, customer satisfaction when they actually launched their chatbot. So yeah, it's a good number. Uh, uh, so yeah, as well as uh, they, they, uh, you can also uh, see a uh, increase in the customer interaction with the business, uh, so that people are more uh, you know. Uh, people are more uh, 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 more uh, more confident about reaching out to uh, to the business so that they can act they think that they, their query will be answered quickly and they don't have to hold on a phone or uh, IVR uh, something like that uh, and wait for the response so the interaction uh, between customer and their business increases right so that's all from the study well uh, let's talk about human takeover so obviously we all know that uh, and, and NLP, the natural language processing, is uh, still lagging a lot behind. Uh, they are only, uh, uh, you, you know, you can keep on training your bot, but then uh, there there's some limitations to it as to how much you can uh, train your bot. So not all queries can be answered by the chatbot, right? So if there's a query which is not understood by the chatbot, it can actually uh, pass on the, uh, you know, uh, pass on. Uh, the chat to the live agent and then live agent can actually pause the bot and then interact with the user and then unpause the bot for that particular user and we will see this in our uh, demo uh, uh, which I'll just show you in a couple of minutes uh, then uh, you know you can also use that as a feedback mechanism to uh, make the bot more smarter because uh, you now have log as to where the bot failed and you can actually add that uh, in into your training for the bot and uh, well, with Gupshop, you can build a human takeover with dashboard.io or smooth.io. We have integrations with both of them, which offers uh, seamless uh, human takeover. So I'm going to use dashboard.io and show you an example for that. Uh, there are some tips about uh, building an effective support chatbot. Always introduce yourselves, like uh, make the expectation clear at the start, like we saw in MSB. Uh, example where it clearly said that you can ask me about placement, you can ask me about courses, you can ask me about fees, etc. And I would be able to answer you. So the expectation, you should always introduce yourself and set the right expectations, right? Uh, uh, use a hybrid uh, of NLP and structured messages. Now we all know that Facebook supports structured messages and our uh, uh, structured messages where you can uh, throw in different buttons with uh, certain text. So uh, it's always uh, suggested to use a uh, structured message with some sort of NLP in it because you don't have, have to heavily rely on you know the NLP part itself that bot has to understand whatever user throws to the bot. So that actually is a good uh, approach right there. Uh, well, uh, start with a small pilot and small use case and then you can actually analyze and iterate over it. Uh, when you do, uh, when you actually, uh, you know, start with a small set, you can actually make it more robust and uh, more useful to the user so that when user has a very good, uh, you know, first interaction with the bot because bot uh, has introduced itself and set the right expectation. User know that the bot can only do this much and he, uh, when whenever a user interacts with the bot, uh, for such small use case, he's always satisfied because the bot is able to do 
what it, it is supposed to do, right? So uh, start small, make it uh, robust, and then keep on iterating and uh, you know go forward with that. Right, so uh, let's uh, get into demo as to how you can develop this on Gupshop as a platform, and we'll also see. Uh, uh, so a little bit about Gupshop. We, if you have not attended any of our webinars, so Gupshop is a bot building platform with, which provides different tools for developers and non-developers to develop bot quickly. We have our own ID bot builder, which is for developers, where you can uh, you where we provide an online coding environment which you can you utilize code your bot there right there and then host it on a server as well we provide all those support uh, then we also have a flow bot builder which is more of a designing the flow of your uh, bot we also have a, a template bot builder where which is for small businesses currently we offer a restaurant template for small restaurants to go online with their menus etc uh, along with that we also have our own NLP framework so we did a webinar on uh, our NLP you can check out the webinar section on our uh, website where you can find the webinar demo uh, of the NLP which we have to offer now that NLP framework we have integrated it with uh, with the ID bot builder we have and created something called uh, something of our own called NLP bot scripting tool and I'm going to demo you uh, using that scripting tool as to how easy it is to feed in you know FAQs and uh, uh, make bot handle uh, similar questions and queries so let let's get straight into it yeah uh, all right uh, so this is gupshop.io you can actually i have already logged in but you can log in using uh, your github account or facebook uh, that's what we use for authentication of a user and you'll be given an api key and you'll your dev id will be created on our uh, uh, platform we have our products listed out here you can check them out uh, we have also a solutions tab where we also feature all the different solutions we have so far developed. Uh, so as a platform, we are open to developers to develop their own board. But if someone wants us, some customer wants us to develop, then we also develop it for them. And then we have our documentation section, which contains documentation around almost everything which has, uh, which is useful for developing bots on our platform. So you should look at these so uh, this is the bot scripting tool documentation uh, I'm not going to uh, talk about uh, what I'm doing and how it is working in details you can always look at this documentation and we will be conducting another webinar as to, of utilizing that bot scripting tool but uh, I will just show you how you can build a create an FAQ bot quickly then add human takeover on it so uh, let's go to my bot section where uh, you all the bots that you have created on platform is listed and you have different options for publishing monitoring health uh, database and everything uh, so what we will do is we will actually pick out uh, this is American Express FAQ uh, page and we will uh, take this about paying bills with my card so we are going to add these five as the uh, you know as the FAQ to our bot so we are going to use uh, the answers copy from here and feed it to the bot so this is something what we are going to do so let's get start uh, straight into it you uh, the, these different tabs is like your bots name you can delete it as well uh, status uh, publish deployed development that means deployed is like you have de deployed it on the server published it means that you have published it on any mess messaging channel which includes our web widget as well which you saw embedded into national uh, school of business or akbar travels or anything uh, data we offer uh, database access and logs which you can check it out you can also enable uh, monitoring and health uh, where we will continuously check whether your bot is working fine or not and this uh, so let's get uh, clicking on the plus sign gives you an option to create your bot so let's say customer yeah, I already have this name, so let's create a customer support bot. Let's let me just say one. And I'm going to you can see there are a lot of different options, but for now I'm going to use the Codeo bot option. Uh, there's a, a option to link your bot as well. So maybe you are not developing in our online ID and you are developing in say Python because our online ID supports JavaScript, not Node.js. So what you can do is you can host your code uh, on a server and give us the callback URL and we'll make it work on different messaging channels. So in that case, you just have to worry about uh, Gupshop's API and not the inline messaging channel. And we have like 20 
plus different channels uh, which we support so it's uh, you can actually choose that to develop so let's get uh, uh, so this is a, again a message which you should be seeing we have come up with our new id which supports the bot scripting tool uh, our old id was a single js file so let's go and get into the new id itself because it's publicly available now for everyone so it will take some time to set up the workspace because we are creating a, a new bot here so let's just wait for this to you know complete because it has to uh, you know add different node modules into the bot so it takes some time there so this url uh, this window is actually attached to your dev id and it has lots uh, 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 i'm just going to close my previous urls sorry previous files which were open and focus on our customer support bot so this id uh, will uh, will quickly go through the id so this section shows the current bot which we are working on uh, it has options like uh, node uh, node debugger package manager you can deploy on prod you can test it out you can start a server locally and test it out using the web widget we have integrated for this you can see bot logs and many more so we will be doing another webinar for this so stay tuned for that so the main file here are the index.js and default.scr now index.js what it does is uh, it has all the important handlers message handler script handler event handler which actually takes in the user input and then pass it on to the uh, uh, pass it on to the bot uh, script which we are going to write so uh, message handler receives any message from the user and it passes out to the script handler script handler talks to the default.scr and see whatever uh, code we have written so uh, the scr file uh, is actually divided into sections for more details you can actually uh, you know go ahead and uh, read through these documentations as to how you should get started what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the default code altogether because we do not need that right now uh, so uh, the main section is which uh, which uh, the uh, bot starts with so uh, there are two types of messages in this scripting file you can write one is bot message and what one is user message so we call it as bot state and user state the, so the first line is always a bot state where bot responds back to the user whenever user uh, you know uh, user connects with the bot or get started button or something is triggered so uh, let's say uh, hi i am a chat bot chat bot and can help you with query about American Express um, bill payments. So let's just say bill payment through uh, American Express cards. All right. Uh, about query about. Let's move this because it's actually about bill payments. Uh, okay. S sorry about that. Yeah, so this is the bot state which actually is sent uh, to the user whenever he tries to interact with the bot at the first at the start and then we have a user state. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this query all together and put it right here and this is my user state. I'll indent a bit and then paste the answer as well. So for now, let's just paste uh, answer as to for uh, which is for rewards and let's just do that for this demo purpose. I'm going to paste this now if you look at this uh, the bot state is always marked in green and the user state has no color uh, so my uh, one of my user state is done let's go ahead and you know copy this one time payment as well and then go ahead and copy the response I'll come back match the indentation uh, we will leave that auto, auto, auto bill payment and 
miss the t there but let me just quickly add that payment and we will again uh, copy paste the whole thing here and we will take this question as well and the answer so please bear with me this is slightly time a lot time um, American and the final question so I'm going to train a bot on all these five questions itself for now so let's go ahead and add this all right uh, so I have created my script when you go through the documentation you will also uh, come to know that you can add a section called common uh, common uh, which is actually for all the small talks so if user says hi I'm going to just uh, send this message again so suppose user says hi hello anything I'm just going to create a user state and then a bot state here and let's say who are you and then who are you and then I am a chatbot for American Express let's just say this and uh, I'm going to save my file we should see a save file save message now I'm going to test this locally for now so I'm just going to start the server here yeah it says trying to start the server on port 8081 servers is started and it's reloading the chat widget so let's just open the chat widget And if you if you look at this, it says, "Hi, I'm a chatbot, and how can I can help you with bill payments? Anything else? Uh, let's just go ahead and ask, like, uh, can I earn re reward reward rewards by paying uh, bills through my card?" Let's just say that and let's quickly look at the bot logs as well here uh, so this actually uh, map to will I earn rewards for my bills I pay with my card uh, and it responded to that so if you look at here the NLP response is also shown so our NLP engine matched this query uh, from the user to the intent which we have created here so this is the intent user intent with a match in intent score of 0.48 and some uh, number so so this is what the our NLP engine does it you don't have to go ahead and train it at the start you can actually create uh, it uh, give all the intents and what it does is try to mass user query to the right intent uh, I can also go ahead and say tell me about auto bill pay so it should give me the answer for um, what is automatic bill payment most services provider will allow and that's the answer we have got and again once again if you look at this uh, it has matched uh, to what automatic bill payment with an NLP score of 0.28 so our default NLP uh, score is uh, uh, maximum threshold which we have set as 0.2 so anything of 0.2 and above will be respond uh, taken into consideration um, or uh, we can also ask why uh, why should I use my card to pay bills let's just say and which is no we have not trained anything uh, on this sort here right so why use my American Express card to pay my bills that's what we have trained it but our uh, engine was able to map the user query to the right intent and then we got the answer that when you pay your bills with your card you get your hard-earned dollars and everything is answered so this is one way uh, let's uh, go ahead and you know instead of just hi I'm just going to add uh, my username to it so uh, I'm just going to create so this is a script handler as I talked about is the main uh, handler here which uh, corresponds to the uh, scripting uh, scripting SCR file and everything so I'm just going to create a variable called data uh, which I'm going to add as an empty array and what I'm going to do is options dot data dot user uh, name I'm just creating a variable to it and uh, since the username would be in event 
Uh, now that this thing which I'm going to write is also documented in the ID bot builder different objects sent to the bot which you can look for. Uh, event dot sender obj dot display. Now this will give me the uh, name which is uh, which comes from the messaging channel, right? And I'm going to save this file as well. And in the default dot scr, I'm just going to do this user name. So what my script will do is whatever username is sent to the uh, bot will actually be added here. So in our case, I'm just going to you know reload the chat widget, and this will refresh uh, the widget with a new file. Uh, okay, no, it didn't. Uh, I think file was saved. Yeah, this file is also saved. So let's go ahead and stop the server and quickly start the server again. So it should actually show me hi developer because that's my name which gets sent to uh, when using the chat widget which is for the local testing. So it should show me a message saying hi developer. All right, hi developer, there you go. So now let's go ahead and deploy this on prod and uh, do a testing using Gupshub's proxy bot, which is a testing tool uh, which we have it on Facebook Messenger, Slack, Twitter, any messaging channel that we support, we have a Gupshub proxy bot which can mimic any users on uh, any bot uh, on Gupshub platform. So let's quickly, you know, uh, once this is deployed, we'll have a success message and we will uh, then proxy our customer support bot one there, and then we'll quickly move to uh, handling user, uh, handling the live chat support. I think this is running a bit, so I'm really sorry. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll just have to wait. Yeah, uh, there you go. So I can just copy this command of proxy, and I will quickly go ahead and just say proxy customer support bot, and should actually respond. Yes, there you go. Hi, Shrans Parshkirti. So now it picked up my name on Facebook. If I say hi to it, again, it will respond back the same thing. Who are you? And it should tell me uh, that it's a chat. Uh, okay, some error occurred. It's keys, which is our default message. Uh, uh, there would be a case where, uh, you know, uh, the NLP engine didn't un uh, Add this. So, who are you? Yeah, I'm a chatbot, American Express. So, yeah, there are things which you have to keep on training the bots. Uh, now, let's quickly go ahead and use dashboard.io to uh, actually add uh, the a human takeover. So, I'm going to create as testing uh, Gupshup and uh, Facebook. So, this is uh, dashboard.io, and our integration with dashboard.io is explained here. Uh, this is dashboard.io is an analytics analy bot analytics uh, analytics platform uh, where you can find the various analytics about your bot as well as they offer human takeover for the bot as well. So it has all the steps which you need to take along with the API you need to call to map Gupshub's bot to dashboard. So I'm just going to quickly go over it uh, without going into details. Let's you know select whatever category and save this bot skill. Um, now to uh, do uh, you know pause your bot and everything you have to give a pause URL. Uh, now pause URL will do is it sends out uh, if you look at uh, this uh, you know it's a it has to be a webhook to which uh, dashboard will send user ID and pa whether a uh, paused message whether it's true or false. So we need a callback to the bot right. So we are going to use uh, making HTTP calls to the bot section to utilize the public URL of the bot for this purpose. So I'm just going to add URL, going to paste this, and my bot name as customer support one. So I'm going to quickly get over this, save this. Now this will be saved, and let's go ahead and view reports. It will uh, talk about viewing reports, and let's go ahead and say hi to the bot. Uh, okay, not now. One second. Uh, we also have to pub, uh, make an API call to publish it. Uh, it's all there in the document. I have the. API written over here. So let me just quickly, you know, from the settings, grab the API key which I just created, put it here, and send this. And I should get a two. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Uh, because my bot name is customer support bot one. So I should get a 204. Once I get the 204, that means my bot is all set. So let's go ahead and say hi once again. Uh, and uh, let's uh, ask about uh, uh, auto bill pay. Let's just say auto bill pay and it gives me an answer. Let's look at, you know, let's go to live transcripts. And if you look at here, you can see that all the chat which you have, which I have been having with the bot is actually here. Now, if I click on pause bot, a message will be sent to the bot. So now message, uh, if you look at the documentation, it says that the uh, whenever this uh, call is made, it goes to HTTP endpoint handler. So what I'm going to do, Move this log section. Uh, so this is my HTTP endpoint handler. Uh, no, this is response handler. This is my HTTP endpoint handler, and I'm going to uh, quickly, you know, copy this from uh, my documentation and put it right here. So uh, instead of param as text, it would come as uh, user ID and pause ID. So I'm just going to um, name that and let's. Oh shit. Okay. Um, so here user ID and let's just say this as uh, pause. And here I'm just going to call this paused. And just make. Uh, now what I'm going to do is store this in database. So for that context dots and uh, simple dp dot make no, no no it's do put and in this uh, user ID would be uh, my uh, key and pause this is pause right yeah pause is my value so this is going to go into the database and I'm going to save this and now I have to handle this in my message handler so that uh, message handler has to uh, actually uh, in message handler, what I'm going to do is context dot simple db dot do uh, get. So uh, I have to get uh, the value against the key I'm storing, and that value is similar to event dot send obj dot channel id. I believe it's channel id, so I'm just going to confirm that. Let me just quickly confirm that. So sender object and its channel ID. Yes. Uh, so I'm just going to say channel ID and that's it. Uh, let's cut this out. Now any uh, now uh, since every uh, call is asynchronous, so response of this would go into uh, DB handler, uh, DB get handler. So I'm just going to remove this and add this. Now we'll have to add a check to check whether the ID is paused or undefined. So I have the check already in place. Uh, because I knew I would run out of time, so uh, so if I'm just going to else, it should make the call to this. So what I've done is, if uh, it, uh, okay, I haven't written down var is paused. Uh, if is is paused will come from event dot uh, db val uh, db val. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, if you look at here any call uh, from uh, a, anything you uh, a response from the database entry or something will go to event dot one so I'm getting the response uh, from that uh, into is false so this should give me true or false and if there's no entry it should give me just undefined and I'm just checking whether uh, all those uh, things are correct if it is true or uh, something like that it should actually uh, you know uh, uh, it should actually send nothing to the user and if these conditions are untrue then or if it is false then it should uh, go to the script handler that's it we are all set here uh, I've saved the file let me uh, just go ahead and deploy this on board we're almost done with the demo So once this is deployed, we will see how the human life takeover will work. Pausing and pausing the board and then uh, bot responding back to users and everything.
So I'm just looking at the logs to see one uh, when we get deployed successfully. Okay, so our bot is deployed successfully. Let's you know go ahead and proxy this again just to uh, make sure that everything is restarted and and all. So here uh, the bot will uh, respond back, and I can ask like um, why should, like let's ask why should. I use my card for bill payment and respond back with any query. So, well, it's working. Like even if I say hi, okay, everything is working. And I have uh, here, I'm getting all the transcripts. So let's go ahead and pause the bot, right? Now the bot is paused. So if for uh, this uh, customer support bot, if I go to data section, I should see uh, uh, entry in the database with uh, my unique ID. Um, still, okay, there's some mistake to it. But, all right, give me just one moment. And you have the function called to get and yeah. This should have actually. Let, let me just refresh this or look at the logs. I'm not sure why this didn't go in. I think we added uh, our, let's look at this. Public, yeah, this is fine, totally fine. Okay, that's, that's weird why this is not updating. It's completely weird when the first Forums paused. Is ready. It should hey, have. Sir, I, I think you have a yeah. spelling error and paused as a couple of the viewers have pointed out. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. really sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, it happens in demo. <laughs> thanks, thanks, everyone. Let me just uh, deploy this quickly. And I'm just going, yeah, reference and repose is not defined, yeah, my bad. I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, so, so by the time this gets deployed, let me go ahead and unpause the bot so that I can uh, send a pause request again. So let me keep this. And let me open the data tab till then. Yeah, uh, successfully paused and, sorry, successfully deployed. So let's go ahead and pause the bot. We, we clicked on that. And now the data tab should contain one more row. With my ID, yeah, there you go. So I have my unique ID here, which is the user ID, and the value is true. Now, if I go ahead and say hi on uh, this, I should not get a response from the bot. But I should see this hi in the transcript. So hello, Shreyans, uh, and I am a human agent. How can I help? And let's send this. And if you look at my screen, hello, friends. I'm a human agent. How can I help? Uh, turn back the bot. Turn on the, the bot. And I'm just sending turn on the bot. You uh, Here I will receive that message. Turn on the bot. So let's go ahead and unpause the bot. When I do that, and if I just close this and refresh this. Okay, still, uh, uh oh, hello? Wow, I have some problem with my internet now. This is so weird.
So while Shreyans uh, sorts out his internet, uh, mm -hmm. we, we are taking a few questions. There are a couple of questions that have already come in that I'll probably take right now. So Rahul has asked, so, can it handle spelling mistakes? And if yes, to what extent? So yeah, Ra yeah Rahul, I mean, our NLP API handles any sort of spelling mistakes. Uh, to what extent, as in as long as it doesn't change the meaning of the word, I think the, the API should be able to handle it. So that, that's a problem. Uh, Sohan, just to cut you out here, uh, now you can see that uh, even my that Gupshop is not opening, not sure why, but I have my bot unpaused and I can uh, again like auto the pay and the bot has actually started responding back when I unpaused it. So that's how I can go ahead and pause and unpause the bot. So that concludes the demo and over to you uh, Sohan uh, for concluding the presentation. Thanks so much, Shane, for that detailed uh, uh, demo. So a lot of people are asking if if they'll get a recording of the webinar. Yes, you will. Uh, you know, uh, Shane's this, this demoed like a lot of features of the Gupshop platform, and and I'm sure it'll be very beneficial to you all. So we will send you the recording by tomorrow. Uh, we'll just take a couple of quick questions because we're almost out of time. Uh, Anirudh has asked an interesting question and said, any idea any idea how we can handle NLP for English? So for the uninitiated, English is a sort of, it, it's a portmanteau word for Hindi plus English, which which a lot of people conversationally talk a lot in, in India. Right? That's a good question, Anirudh, and it is a little tricky because uh, English as such isn't like an official language. We have built like certain, you know, like for instance, we did like the chatbot bit for ICICI where a lot of the consumers were talking in English, right? So it, it it might not be an exact like sort of NLP, but there are a lot of ways by doing like semantic searches and stuff like that, where you can really pull out intents and uh, then use like like maybe predefined dictionary of set of words to kind of figure out what the user is trying to say. So we have done it in the past. Uh, again, combine like uh, Shriyan said, one tip is to you know combine it with structured messages. Uh, you can have that in multiple languages as well, so that you can really you know uh, nail it down to what the user is trying to say. Uh, and then maybe throw in a little bit of uh, semantic sort of uh, searching to really pass the English. Right. Um, Apriya has asked a question about how does the bot keep the messages. So Apriya, uh, I'd, I'd suggest you look at some of the other either webinars or a documentation where we've covered this. But essentially, because I mean, Cupshop is a platform that enables easy bot development. So you really don't have to write APIs to you know do send and receive like explicitly from a bot platform. Um, so, like Shayan showed, like an event dot message would actually just get the message from uh, the bot. Or, uh, you know, uh, I'd, I'd love to explain it in a little more detail, but just go through our documents and you, you should get an idea. And you've also asked what database does it use? Um, so, each bot has its own database itself, if that's what you're asking. But in general, the platform is built on Amazon and it's built on DynamoDB, so it uses DynamoDB. Right. Sandeep again asks an interesting question as to how you handle multiple intents. So Sandeep, essentially in this question, I mean in the demo that we showed, what Shreyan showed, uh, each question is treated as an intent. Right. So you saw Shreyan write five different questions that he took from the American Express website. Each question is treated as an intent. Now uh, in more complex scenarios like such as the one in Upper Travels, uh, what can happen is maybe say you can define refund as an intent, but under refund there can be many different questions such as uh, when can I get my refund, how can I get my refund and things like that. So you can define like one top level intent and then have multiple intents under that. Right? So you can actually do some sort of disambiguation. So maybe the user just says refund. So you can actually as a bot prompt the user saying, hey, do you mean you want to find out how you can get your refund or how much your refund amount is? And then based on what the user says, actually give you an answer. So you can actually try all of that out on the upper bot. It's pretty interesting that we have implemented some of these things, but it is possible to do. Okay, uh, cool. I think we are done with questions. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for attending, and thanks for thanks Marcel and Sandeep for your eagle eyes for spotting the typo in the code. Uh, I mean, I think we are glad you know we were able to hold your attention with the webinar that we did. We host these webinars almost every week. So do you tune in, keep a look out on our Twitter uh, profile at Gupshop or just write to us at developer at gupshop.io. We'll be seeing you soon. So thanks again for attending this. Thank you everyone.